Hi, my name is Dave Johansson and I'm the co-owner of Blossom Hill Crafts Pottery School. Uh, today I'm going to be teaching a beginning pottery lesson, uh, basically how to just throw a cylinder. This is the first thing that you need to know uh, when learning to throw a pot. Everything in wheel throwing pottery starts with a cylinder, so we're going to start there. Um, to do this, uh, you're going to need a bat. This plastic disc is what we actually throw the pot on so we can pick it up when it's wet. Uh, you're going to need a needle tool and a sponge, a bucket of water, and that's about it. So um, this top part of the wheel right here, this is called the wheel head. And I need to get this bat affixed to the wheel head. So the way I'm going to do that is I've got a very small amount of clay here. And I'm going to spread this clay very thinly on the wheel head. And let me emphasize thinly, you don't want to use a lot of clay and you don't want it to be thick. There are uh, two little pins on this wheel head right here and here. They're called bat pins. You don't want to stick the clay around the pins. And what you're going to do is uh, take your sponge, load it up with water, and then just soak the wheel head like this with water. And what's going to hold the bat down is suction. If you put a whole lot of clay on there, what happens is this, it won't suck down because it won't be, it, it won't be even on the surface of the, the wheel head. The bat won't be even. So a, lot of, a little bit of clay, a lot of water, and just push that bat down like that, and you're there. That's all you need to do. Uh, if you add more clay than that, you're actually just making your life hard. So uh, you need to turn the wheel on. Uh, there should be uh, an on switch on the lower right hand side of the wheel. And there's a pedal on the wheel. Uh, my pedal looks just like this. Works like the gas pedal on a car. If I push it down with my foot, the wheels goes faster. All I have to do is push my heel down and it stops. Uh, the one difference is, is I, obviously I'm doing this with my hand because you can't see my foot. But I can set the speed with my foot and take my foot off the pedal and the wheel will continue moving at that speed unless I push the heel down, just like that. So, I, uh, I have uh, two pounds of clay here and uh, in a ball. And starting with somewhere between a pound and a half and two pounds of clay is, is where you want to start, sort of depending on how big your hands are. If you have smaller hands, go with a smaller amount of clay. Um, and what we're going to do with this clay is just set it firmly down right in the middle. Now I prepared this clay through a process called wedging and you're going to want to learn to wedge your clay too and I'm teaching that in a different video. So I'm taking this two pound ball of clay and I'm just firmly setting it right in the middle just like that. You don't need to whale it down because if you do you're going to end up pretty far from the center just firmly. And then you want to get the wheel spinning but just barely spinning and you're going to take your hands and pad the clay down. I'm just patting it down. I'm patting it down in a dome shape, not flat, but both hands and just patting it down. And that's just making sure that the clay is stuck to the bat. And now I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to seal the clay to the bat. I want you to notice I haven't put any water on top of the clay or on top of the bat. I'm sealing the clay the clay to the bat so I can put water on it and water won't get under the clay. If water gets under the clay, the clay is not going to stay put and I need it to stay put. So um, I've got my clay connected to my bat here. I want to talk for a minute about the fundamentals of throwing. The first thing is your body needs to be as close to the wheel as you can get it. So scoot your stool up and your body up so you're all the way in. The second thing is that your elbows are always in and your hands are connected in some way. Body in, elbows in, hands connected. If you're struggling, the chances are that one of those two things is the issue. Your one of those three things. Your body isn't in, your elbows aren't in, or your hands aren't connected. So I'm going to speed the wheel up and get it going about as fast as it will go. And I'm going to take my foot off the pedal leaving the wheel spin. Now the reason I take my foot off the pedal is that I don't walk and chew gum at the same time very well and if I leave my foot on the pedal I'm going to speed the wheel up and slow it down and I don't want to do that. I just want it going nice and fast. My first task is to center the clay. I need it round and in the middle. So to do that I need to soak the clay with water. 
and I'm going to take my left elbow and I'm going to turn it all the way into my body. I'm putting it into my hip and I'm going to put my hand up against the clay right there. Now the clay is riding up against my palm right where my arm comes out. I'm not pushing on the clay over here on my wrist. That overflexes my wrist and it's not good. I want the clay right there pushing up right there and I'm going to put my right hand on top of the clay and I'm going to connect my thumbs just like that. So I'm like this on the clay. And because my elbow is connected to my hip, if I push my hip forward, if I push my body forward, my arm is going to go forward. And when I push this hip forward and my arm goes forward, it's going to push that clay up into a cone. Now, while I'm pushing forward like this, my right hand is going to be on top of the clay, but it's not pushing down. If it's pushing down, um, I won't be able to lift the clay up. So here I am. I'm going to lean into the clay, and you can see that that clay went up. I'm going to move my right hand away so you can kind of see. I'm just leaning. I'm leaning into the clay. And that's what centers the clay. So now my clay is mostly centered. I'm going to put that right hand on top of the clay and I'm using this part of my hand, not this part. This part. This part is strong. This part is weak. Strong, weak. So I'm on there just like this and I'm just going to push that clay down and when I take my hands off the clay I'm going to sneak away. I don't want the clay to know that I've left. I'm always coming into the clay and moving away from the clay very gently and smoothly. So one more time, my hand is on there. I'm actually, I want you to have this hand on top, but I'm going to move it so you can see. I'm pushing in with my body. If I use my arm strength or my shoulder strength, this is hard to do, but if I push with my body, it's easy. So there I am. I'm going to have my hand on the top and now I'm going to bring that clay down and move away slowly. So I now have a centered piece of clay. The second step is to drill a hole in the middle. So I'm going to use my two hands together. My left hand is going to be a tool rest. I'm going to make a V with my hand like this. I'm going to place the crux of the V right at my belly button and place my hand on top of the clay like that. I'm not squeezing. I'm just letting my hand rest on top of that clay. Now I'm going to take my right hand and I'm going to put it right into the V of my hand right there and I'm going to go right to the middle of the clay and I'm going to drill a hole. I'm just pushing down like this, drilling a hole. And I'm going to go down until I have a quarter inch of clay at the bottom. I'm going to take a second here and disconnect my bat. I'm going to need a screwdriver because I put it down there good so that I can kind of show you this on the video. Do you see how I just went over my hand like that and I drilled a hole and my goal is to have a quarter inch of clay at the bottom. Put that back on there. I need to go down just a little bit deeper. My left hand is the tool rest. My right hand is the tool. I'm going to take my needle tool now and I'm going to poke a hole through the bottom of my pot down to the bat. Then I'm going to take my finger, this finger, and I'm going to run it down to the bottom. And the distance from the tip of my finger to the tip of that needle tool is how much clay I have. And I have about a quarter inch of clay. I don't know if you can see that clearly. It's probably not focusing really well. Um, I have a quarter inch of clay from the tip of the needle to the tip of my finger. And that's what I want. That's going to be the bottom of my pot. Now, again, inside here, inside of this, I've got sort of an, uh, a hole that's like an upside down pyramid. It's shaped, it's shaped a bit like that. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start opening that hole up by changing the pyramid, the upside down pyramid shape into a cylinder. And then I'm going to pull the cylinder open wide. So to do that, I'm going to get a lot of speed on the wheel again. Get my bat down. Get a lot of speed on the wheel again. 
I like to take my foot off the pedal so I'm not speeding the wheel up and slowing it down. That left hand is back down in the V, the crux of the V pointing right at my belly button. My hand goes inside of the V, my fingertip is all the way at the bottom of the floor of the pot, and I'm going to pull towards my hand, up my wrist. And while I'm doing that, I'm focusing on keeping the floor of the pot flat. I don't want to pull up like this and create a bowl shape, and I don't want to push down while I pull and go through the bottom. I want to pull so I have a nice, flat, wide open cylinder. And I'm going to show that to you again. See that water under there does a good job of keeping this bat down. So now you can see that my cylinder has been opened. The bottom is flat and the wall here is mostly straight up and down. And that's what you want. So the first step was to center the clay. The second step was to drill a hole. And the third step was to open that hole wide into sort of a, a short stout cylinder. There are three separate steps and should be done individually. So now that my hole has been opened, I'm gonna compress the rim of my pot. I want that rim to be really nice. I want that clay up there to be good. So we call this making an H. My left hand goes like this. My right finger goes like that. These, these fingers are pinching just a little bit. And this one is pushing down just a little bit. On the pot, it looks just like that. Just like that. The floor of the pot on the inside needs to be compressed. As this pot dries, the walls are going to dry faster than the bottom. And that can cause all kinds of problems. So I want to make sure the clay particles at the bottom of the pot are pushed together. They're really, really compressed. And I'm going to do that with the pointer finger of my right hand. So I'm going to get the wheel spinning relatively fast again. I like to take my foot off the pedal so that the wheel keeps the same speed. I'm going to take my right pointer finger. I'm going to put it down at 2 o'clock. I'm going to grab my right wrist with my left hand because I'm always using my two hands together. I'm going to push down lightly. And I'm going to move my hand to the center of the pot and then pick it up. So on the outside, on the bat, I'm going to kind of change my hand here so you can see I'm pushing down and I'm moving to the center all right just like that I'm doing that on the inside of the pot I'm not pushing down hard I'm pushing down lightly and I'm just compressing the clay now the second I put my hand down it's gonna want to go like that because the wheel is moving so I have to put my hand down and kind of get it used to staying there remember this is actually happening on the inside of the pot I'm going to put my hand down and get it kind of used to staying there and then move slowly to the center. Now this is moving in a circle so it's the, the wheel is moving at a different speed here than it is here. So it takes focus to just push and move to the middle. In the inside of the pot right there I'm going to just do that and I want to do it three times. And that's going to just make that bottom really strong and reduce the chances of your pot cracking considerably. So now we're to the part um, that's called throwing. In English we say to throw a pot. Now um, that actually sounds silly because throwing would be destructive. We're not going to pick the pot up and throw it. That, that would be dumb. The old English word to throw meant to lift. So we're going to take this short stocky cylinder and lift it up into a taller cylinder. That's our goal. So um, if I go to lift up a box, I don't put my hands on the outside of the box, squeeze and try to pick it up. I want to get my hands under the box and lift it up. It's the same thing here. I need to get under the clay so I can lift it up. So my first move is to make a groove at the bottom of the pot. Now oftentimes when you're centered, you already have a groove there. But no matter what, just get in the habit of making that groove. It's very important, okay? The reason is that I could take this finger, go right under the clay there, and start lifting up. Because there's a groove down there, there's clay sitting right on top of my finger, and I can just start to lift that clay up. In order to do that effectively, I need to use my two hands together. So, 
Put a little water on the pot. So you'll see me putting water on the pot periodically. Water's like oil. It makes everything move smoothly. When you're starting, you're going to need more water. As you get better, you use less water. So, to lift the pot, to throw the pot up, I'm going to take my left hand and put it right down here at 5 o'clock. The tip of my pointer finger is running on the bottom of the pot. My thumb is right above the groove that I made on the outside. My fingers are not pinching together like a pliers. They're just down, just like this. On the inside of the pot, this part of my finger is engaged. This part of my finger is engaged. The rest of my finger is not engaged. My thumb just right above that groove. And I'm just letting the clay slip through my hand. Now, because it's moving, your hand is going to want to go this way. Your body is going to want to go this way. Your elbow is going to want to come up. You're going to end up over the clay like this unless you stay right here. If it's not comfortable, it's not right. My hand just stays right here at 5 o'clock. Now, with my right hand, I'm going to make a toy gun. I'm going to place the sponge on the barrel and wrap it around just like that. The key here is the tool is the finger. The sponge is just there to provide some lubrication. So like that and like that. Now my left hand is here. My right pointer finger is going to go right below my thumb, right there with the sponge. I'm pushing my finger into that groove right below my thumb and then I'm turning my wrist up. Now it's very important that your wrist is up like this. If it's like this, I can lift up. If it's like this, it's very hard to lift up. If it's like this, I can't lift up. If it's like this, I can't lift up. But if my finger is in there like that, I can lift the clay up, and that's my goal. So it looks just like this. And there we go. I'm lifting the clay up. Now when I get to the top, I'm going to slowly release and pull my hands away. I'm sneaking away from the pot, never moving quickly. Now I'm going to compress the rim, making that H again. After every pull, I'm going to compress the rim. So my next step is to make another groove at the bottom. Every time. I go to lift the clay, I make a groove. I'll put a little water on the pot for the sake of lubrication. I'm not going to soak it. Make that toy gun, wrap the sponge around my finger, put my left hand in place first, just like that. My thumb right down there at that groove, my pointer finger riding at the bottom of the pot, the tip of my finger right there. If it gets too tall and your thumb won't go all the way to the bottom, that's okay. Bring it down, this thumb, bring it down as far as it will go. I'm going to push my finger into that groove and lift up. Now I'm going to stop right here. My finger are just like that. They started at the bottom just like that and lifted up. This finger was at the floor of the pot on the inside and this finger was on the bottom like that. They stay in that relationship all the way up. The two hands come up like an elevator. They go straight up. That inside finger and that outside finger should never be across from each other. If they are, you're going to pinch the top off like a donut. Now I'm going to finish this pull off without... Uh, you know what? I'm actually I'm going to stop the wheel here and I'm going to pop this off. And I'm going to turn this to the camera and see if you can see. If you look right in here, that's where my inside finger is. It's right there. And if you look at that spot right there in relationship to the outside, you can see my outside finger is there and my inside finger is right in there. All right? That's the relationship. That's very, very important. So I'm going to finish this pull out without the sponge. And by the way, you don't need to use the sponge. Most beginners find it easier. But notice my thumb is still right above that groove. 
My inside finger is right above my outside finger. And I am just lifting. I slowed the wheel down because my foot is on the pedal. And my, there we go. You see that relationship? And I am slowly going to release. And there we go. The beginning of all wheel throwing pottery is a cylinder. So this is the first thing you need to learn how to do uh, is throwing a cylinder. I'm going to do another video on shaping the cylinder for the beginner, but this is the first step. When you're able to throw a cylinder in the shape that you want the cylinder, you can make anything. I'm David, this is Blossom Hill Crafts, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye now.